change and transition. And of course, change, that's what we want everybody else to do, isn't it? You know, <laughs> we don't want to do it, but we want everybody else to change so that our life will be different. <laughs> And yet, of course, you know, any changes that we're going to do at all have to come from within ourselves. They absolutely must. And change to me means that you change from a feeling of separation and isolation and loneliness and anger and fear and pain and into a state of peacefulness wonderful peacefulness where you can relax and really enjoy life as it comes to you knowing that everything will be all right you know i run into that premise that life is wonderful and that everything is perfect in my world and i move into my greater good always and that way it doesn't really matter to me which direction my life takes because i know it's going to be wonderful so i can enjoy all sorts of things you know, Gerald Jampolsky says that love is letting go of fear, and there is either fear or there's love. And if you're not in a love space, if you're not coming from the loving space of the heart, then, then you're in fear and all those other things like isolation and separation and things like that and loneliness and anger. They're all part of the fear syndrome. And that's really what we want to change from. We want to move from fear into love and to make that as more or less a permanent state for us. You know, even the planet itself these days is very much in this period of change and transition. We see it all around us. We're going from an old order into a new order. And some people say it began with the Aquarian age. And the, at least the astrologers like to describe it that way. But you know, to me, astrology and numerology and palmistries and all those other uh, various methodologies are just ways of describing life. They explain life in a slightly different way. And people use different language to do this. But the astrologers say that we're moving out of the Piscean Age and into the Aquarian Age now. And you know, in the Piscean Age, we reached outside of us and looked to other people to save us. We looked for other people to do it for us. But in the Aquarian Age, which we're entering now, people are beginning to go within and find that they have the power to save themselves. And this is a wonderful, liberating thing for us. Now, some people get very frightened because it seems to be responsibility. But actually, we're discovering our ability to respond to life, not in a victim way, but in a way that gives us power. In a way that gives us power. We're finding that we're getting a connection to what the AA people call the higher power and what I call our higher self so that we can contribute to saving ourselves. And it's a wonderful feeling when you don't really have to be dependent on an outside person, but to know that you have within you tremendous abilities to make positive changes in your life. You see, if we're victims, then we feel isolated, we feel in pain and fear, and we're always looking for someone else to do it for us. But now we're taking, as I said, responsibility for own lives. And we're beginning to understand how we can contribute to the experiences that we have and how we can change those experiences if we don't really care for them. And of course, you know, from the moment you decide to make a change until you get your demonstration, as we call it, or when you get what you want, we have this transitional period. And that's when we're moving between the old order and the new order. It's a time of releasing old beliefs and old habits and of learning and practicing and then living the things that we're working on. The new beliefs or the new feelings or the new methods or the new behaviors. And while you're getting those in place so that they are a natural part of your life, you're gonna have a lot of vacillating in that period between the old and the new. And you go back and forth between what, you, what was and what you, what you would like to be or what you would like to have. 
And if you decide that you're going to release an old belief and that you're going to create a new one, during that transitional period, you're going to go back and forth. And this is a time when we often get very angry at ourselves because it's like, well, I know all about the new, why aren't I doing it? I must not be good enough or I must be a bad person. But that's silly because anything that we're learning takes time. And you go back and forth and back and forth until you're really strong in the new belief, until you've gone to the complete shift. You know, you may begin to do an affirmation for something, and you're doing well, and then something happens, and you say, oh, I can't do that, and you go back to your old worry habit again. Well, that's just a period of vacillating. It doesn't mean that you haven't learned anything, and it doesn't mean that you're back where you started. It's just part of that back and forth thing. You're not settled in your new habit yet. And that takes a little time and a little practice and a little patience. And you want to be patient with yourself. Be patient with yourself. You know, you want to build yourself up instead of beating yourself up. There's a tremendously different image if you just think of it. Do your thoughts build you up or do they beat you up? When you beat yourself up, you know, that's not being very loving to yourself. Sometimes we don't need to make outward changes so much as to go within and just sort of take what we already do and alter it just a little bit. Somebody was saying to me tonight that they were thinking about a new apartment and they were worrying that there wouldn't be enough money. And I said, well, why don't you start affirming there will be lots of money? And you know, it's just like a tiny little thing and you almost change two words. But it's a small way of changing the way you look at a particular situation. Somebody was asking me, uh, saying that they were in a, a lot of pain. And you know, they kept using the word pain so much. And they said, is there another word that I could use? And I thought of the time that I smashed my finger with an, um, a window. and. I realized that if I really gave into it, I was going to go through a very difficult period. So the minute it happened, I started to do some mental work right away. But then I remember I was referring to my finger as having a lot of sensation. <laughs> and it did. It had a lot of sensation. <laughs> And you know, by insisting upon viewing it in that particular way, to me, I think helped it heal much quicker and helped me handle what could have been an incredibly painful thing. Because I knew that if I could alter my mind, it would be better. If we can just alter the way we think just a little bit. So those of us who want to change, we're moving from an old order to a new order. And lots and lots of things are happening on this planet. I don't think things on the planet are so very different than they used to be, but we seem to be more aware of things. I see things in the paper all the time and I think, oh my goodness, are we really doing that? And then as I continue to read, it seems like we've been doing it for a long time, but it's coming to the surface. We seem to see more negativity. But you know, if you want to clean your own mental house, if you decide to work on yourself and you're going to go inside, you have to look and see what is there. You have to look and see what your beliefs are so you know what to change. You can't clean out the negativity if you don't see it. If you're going to clean your own house, it's the same thing. You have to look around and see where the dirt is. You have to pick things up and dust them and look around and polish them or throw them out or replace them. But you have to see what's there. And if we're going to make a big transitional phase on this planet, and really help to heal this planet, we're going to have to look and see what's occurring here. We're going to have to see what's happening and to uncover the negativity. And the things that have been hidden for a long time are going to come to the surface. And I think that part of this transitional phase that we're going through, I think part of the catalyst for this is this crisis called AIDS. You know, I really want to help create a world where it's safe for us to love each other. That's all, just to love each other. A world where we can be loved and accepted exactly as we are. That's what you wanted when you were a little child. When you were little, you wanted to be loved just as you were, even if you were too skinny or too heavy, or if you weren't smart enough, or you weren't like the person across the street, 
or maybe you were scared, but you still wanted to be loved. And it's the same thing we're all looking for now, only we're not going to get this love and acceptance from other people unless we can give it to ourselves. When we feel good enough to be loved, then others will love and accept us too. It's really that simple. I think that we come to this planet to learn and to practice unconditional love. And it's not always an easy thing to do, but I think that's what we've come here for. To have unconditional love, first of all, for ourselves, no matter what they said or what they did to us in the past. And also to give that same unconditional love to other people, to just allow them to be who they are and to get rid of this them and us because it's not them and us, it's all us. And we need to know that. And if we're gonna heal this planet, we have to know it's all us. And there are no groups that are expendable, and there are no groups that are less than. There may be many people who are in so much pain that they're being harmful to other people. But you know, if we can understand that acts of violence come from a person who was a traumatized child. Now this is not to condone people who do violent things, but to understand that if we want to change them, if you want people to become loving and peaceful, then you have to teach them to come from a loving space of the heart. And you're not going to teach them that if you don't know how to do it yourself. You don't create wars and kill people, you don't beat people, you don't throw people into prisons or torture them or do things like that. You teach them to forgive and to love themselves so they'll never do those violent things again. Because you realize that people who love themselves cannot hurt themselves and they cannot hurt another person. And to me, that's the answer to world peace and harmony and all sorts of wonderful things. So to help as many people as possible learn to love who they are, it's very simple. And that's my work in this world, is to help people love themselves. To love ourselves so that we can get to this new order of what I see as unconditional love and peace and plenty for everyone. And I know that it's possible if we can just get the nonsense out of the way. I believe that when we leave the planet, the only thing we take with us is our capacity to love. We take our capacity to love with us, and that's all. We don't take our relationships, we don't take our automobiles or our bank accounts or our jobs. We take our capacity to love. And we have many, many opportunities to open our hearts on a much deeper level than we have. To me, love is the answer. I really believe that love is the answer. It's powerful, it helps us, it helps other people. How do you give love to the world? What are you doing to create your own inner harmony? What do you do on a daily basis to make yourself feel good inside? Or do you just sit and bitch about what you don't have? <laughs> well, it's one way of handling it, but it doesn't change the situation. <laughs> you know, you're not going to do it by being mad at yourself or being mad at other people. And you're not going to do it by blaming people. And you're not going to do it by being a victim. So what is it you do? How do you express unconditional love in your life? Even a little bit. Is there a small area of your life where you're willing to give unconditional love? How are you experiencing peace within you and around you? And if you're not doing it now, are you willing to begin? Are you willing to start creating inner harmony and peace? Another question to ask yourself is, do you really want to change? Do you want to change? Or do you want to just sit there and complain about what you don't have? Or do you want to be a person who really has and creates a much more wonderful life than you have now? 
And if you're willing to change, you can. If you're willing to do the work involved, which means changing the way you're thinking, then you can change your life for the better. People come up to me a lot and say, oh, Louise, you've changed my life. Well, I don't change anybody's life. I don't do that. I'm not a healer. I don't heal anybody. I don't change anybody. I don't have that kind of power. Only you can change yourself. And only you can clean out the pain within you. I can't do that for you. I can stand up here all evening and say wonderful things and give lots of good advice. But you're the only thinker in your mind. And you're going to make the decision of what you want to do with the information that you're being given. I have no power over you. You have the power and you need to know that. We think so often that we are helpless, but we're not helpless because we have our minds. We have our minds. And you shape and mold your life from moment to moment by your thoughts and your beliefs and your attitudes. And you also want to know that you really are important to this world. You might say, well, I really don't do anything. But you are. Just the fact that you're alive is important. And your life has meaning. It really does. And you can contribute to the peace and the harmony of this planet just by using your mind. Now, some people get involved politically, and some people march, and some people do Peace Corps, and some people help feed the homeless and do all sorts of things. And that's fine. But you can also contribute to the peace and harmony of the planet just as much by how you use your mind. And remember, every time you think, every time you're thinking, you're connecting with like-minded people. Think of that for a minute.